Hey, what's up guys, it's FitDread, and with the free fly event for Star Citizen happening right now, I wanted to address something that I think a lot of the new players will be asking. Is Star Citizen worth it? Is it worth playing? Is it worth buying after the free fly? Well, I mean, here's the time to test it. Because now you can get on the game for free and just play around, see what the game is like. And actually, this is a great test to see if you're willing and have the patience to deal with Star Citizen. Because right now, the game is in a pretty rough state, okay? The game is in a new patch, 3.18.1. And this patch um, has been buggier than, I guess, previous patches, right? So... What you have to understand about Star Citizen as a new player is the game's very alpha, okay? And it's not just like, this is an alpha, you can play early. No, dude, this is like, you're a guinea pig for the developer's testing type of alpha, okay? You are here to break the server so they can get that feedback and then maybe fix it, maybe. You know, so that is really where you stand in this picture. In fact, they probably should pay you to play the game with how buggy it is right now because you're basically a unpaid intern with how you're testing these this alpha. So anyway, here's the thing. Is Star Citizen worth it? Now, from my perspective, I think it is worth it, okay? Obviously, this is a subjective thing. This is some opinion. It's my opinion, right? Is it worth it? Well, for me, I really enjoy the game. You know, I'm somebody that gets in the game. I can fly around in these cool ships and just enjoy flying. You know, it's as simple as that for me. I get in whatever ship I think is cool today and I fly it around, okay? The, at the bare minimum, that's all I need to be able to kind of have a little bit of fun to the game. Now, I'm kind of in this like honeymoon phase with the game, if you want to call it that. So basically, I started the game like late last year and it's still awesome for me. I haven't been following the game that closely for like as long as some of these other salty seasoned veterans on YouTube and whatnot. So they don't really look at the game in the same way, right? They've been beat down by Star Citizen. They're basically this withered away souls that have no life left in them. And you know why? Because CIG has put them through the ringer over the years, okay? They've been suffering. If, if you feel, if you follow development since the beginning, you've been feeling pain this whole time and you You've turned into this husk of a human as a result right now i entered the scene around late last year and i got in in 3.17 at the end of its life cycle so it was a pretty ironed out patch right they got they kind of figured that patch out and the next big thing was new features right which were obviously going to break the game so the game ran okay you know in 3.17 the game ran pretty consistently yeah i had issues a lot of issues like you know my hands would break so i'd put drinks in them and now i can't drink anymore but a lot of times with these sort of bugs in Star Citizen, you can find workarounds. So my workaround was to go to the food stalls, the kiosks, and the and I could quick buy food, and that would pretty much guarantee I'd get something I could eat or drink into my hand, and then I can consume it. Star Citizen is a game of finding these bugs developing workarounds, learning how the game wants to be used. For example, the star map in the game is comically bad. Uh, I have a friend that is like his top number one thing. The star map is so bad that he, he basically hates it with a passion. He almost won't play the game because the star map is so bad. But, you know, I've gotten to the point where like I've been, you know, using this crappy star map for so long that like I've figured it out, right? You merely adopted the star map. I was born in it, molded by it. I, I basically figured out how to use the star map. I'm pretty decent at using it now. It's really finicky. It really sucks. You got to kind of know how it likes to be touched. You know what I'm saying? But once you figure that out, you can really get it. So anyway, Star Citizen, is it worth it? To determine if Star Citizen is worth it, you have to figure out what you want out of Star Citizen today. If you want a game to play, this is a very heavily... I'm in development kind of game and I'm okay with that because there's some things you can enjoy about Star Citizen that's unique to Star Citizen. For example, you know, following development is kind of fun. You know, almost every week they're putting out different videos on what's coming. It's really cool, actually. Their media team is pretty good. Jared is really good. You know, online, I look at the ISCs every week or whatever, you know, because they do weekly shows where they show new features coming in, like the next patch, 3.19. Look at the tractor beam update. Oh, that's really cool, you know, and they're really lighthearted and fun on their videos, and that's 
really fun. It's really fun to get excited about the new stuff coming out, videos they publish about Pyro and all the new changes that are coming. That seems really cool. So it's kind of fun to peek behind the curtain and be a part of the process a little bit. But here's the thing, you don't really have to own the game to be a part of that process. So we need to narrow it down. Is Star Citizen actually worth buying and playing? In Star Citizen right now, there's a bunch of gameplay loops that sort of exist, even though they're not really in their final forms. You can kind of do a couple things. You can be a salvager, where you take a salvage ship and you basically hull scrape right now. Taking the salvage ships out, like the Vulture and the Reclaimer, are very fun, and the Reclaimer's a multi-crew one. So you could bring like three or four friends with you if you want, and you can all do this salvage gameplay loop together. Or you could do mining. So mining's really cool, there's multiple ways to go mining. You could do rock mining, which is basically a ground vehicle, and you can go and drive on the surface and pick up gems. You could do ship mining in a prospector or a mole with multi crew you can do bounty hunting and you can do other pvp related activities like piracy okay piracy you can do it's legitimate gameplay loop all right some people might not like that but it is what it is cig want piracy to be a legitimate gameplay loop and here's the thing piracy doesn't necessarily have to mean pvp there's a lot of nefarious sort of i'm a pirate gameplay loops there's a lot of personal contracts that allow you to do PVE type of piracy stuff, all right? That's really cool. You can really role play as this, like, I don't follow the law kind of character, and that's really cool, right? Because there's lawful and unlawful contracts out there is what I'm getting trying to say, is so you can role play as any type of character that you really want. It's really cool. You can do trading in various forms. So you can do, like, legal trading, right, where you go and buy a commodity and then go sell it somewhere else. Or you can do illegal stuff like buying drugs and then going to sell them. Trading's pretty cool, but it needs a little bit more fleshed out like all the gameplay loops, really. There's various missions you can take in the game from delivery missions that you can go and deliver boxes. There, A lot of people call them box missions, right? You go and pick up a box, you go deliver the box. You go and pick up three boxes, you go deliver three boxes. Box missions are a pretty good entry level mission for new players because they allow you to learn how to fly your ship, right? You have to fly to a location, you have to land it properly, you have to pick up the cargo, interact with it, bring it on board your ship, shut your ship, take off, fly. So it's a good takeoff and landing sort of flight exercise for new players. So I definitely recommend box missions for someone that wants to kind of learn how the game functions, how to, how to actually manipulate your ship and how to be a pilot. There's mercenary missions and bounty hunting missions. So some of the mercenary missions are going to be circled around protecting the security forces during attacks. They're called bunker missions often. And you can go down to bunkers and basically help the security forces there defend the bunker against assailants. And that's pretty fun. Bunker missions are fun because you get to go fly to a location, go on foot, do some FPS combat, take out some enemies, and then loot, and then take all your fat loot to your ship and then get out of there. It's pretty fun. There's the new raid on Orson mission, which is basically a fancy bunker mission with no allies to protect, which is kind of nice because a lot of new players, they're going to shoot an ally on accident and get a crime stat and potentially risk prison time that's kind of risky so raid on orson pretty chill because you go there and you basically take out uh, anyone you see and then you get some decent pay for it that's pretty cool it's basically like another form of a bunker mission so we've established there's a lot of different missions there's a lot of different gameplay loops some of them more or less ironed out than others but i'll say that for me there's enough content in the game for me to stay busy so for someone like me that doesn't really limit themselves to one gameplay loop i have a lot of stuff that i can do in the game for me star citizen there's no Nothing like it because there's something special about going out to your ship, getting in it, and then just heading out to explore. You know, I, I really like to go to these different locations. I like to go to the various moons and stuff and just fly around. To me, there's something magical about being able to get in my ship, fly to a moon or a planet, and then just fly straight to the surface, land, get out of my ship, walk around, get in my ship, walk around my ship and then fly off. And that's something you can't do in any other game that I know of. Elite Dangerous, not even close, okay? This is another level of immersion that you can play and be a part of right now. And to me, that's the game's good enough right now to where I'm perfectly content with being a part of the process. I, I can deal with this struggle of trying to play the game that the game's in alpha. It's very buggy. It's got a lot of issues. Sometimes they release a patch that makes the game unplayable for like 
it seems like a month at a time. And it's painful sometimes to be a part of a process like this where you have this desire to play a game. It's you want to play it, you want to be a part of the community and you want to be excited about it. And then you hit these roadblocks, which is the game being broken. And you're like, bro, I just want to play the game. It's so fun. It's I want to play it. I, want, I have friends that want to play it. I want to get on with them. I want to do org events. I want to do meetups. I want to like do all kinds of stuff. And when the game just doesn't work, you can't do it. So it's interesting that choosing to do a free fly right now in kind of the game's worst state so anyway in conclusion is star citizen worth playing i think it's a pretty fun sandbox that the community is really fun there's enough to the game right now to chew on that i think that the game is worth it i think it's absolutely worth it i think it's fun i i enjoy the game myself i've already spent a lot of money on the game because i think the game is awesome I think it's so fun and I've joined an org and we've done a lot of cool org events and we've done cool activities together and we've we've done a lot of cool stuff. I have friends that play the game with me now and they, they've they really enjoyed it despite the bugs. It's crazy. I think that most game enthusiasts are going to love this game. I think it's really, really cool. I, I genuinely do. I think Star Citizen is one of the coolest games I've ever played. Seriously, even though it's not really a game right now, it's kind of a work in progress heavily. Okay, it's very buggy. Sometimes you can't play the game. Sometimes the game is down and it's broken and it's just frustrating as hell. And the servers keep crashing. They call them 30Ks. There's a lot of negatives to this game. But if you can fight through that stuff, play the free fly, check it out, see what the game is like get the feel for it and if you like the game maybe get a starter pack they got a couple on discount right now use someone's referral code use my referral co code if you want just know one thing about referral codes the 5000 auec credits that you're gonna get that is basically nothing i mean yeah it's like a thousand cruise lux drinks worth but like 5000 auec you can get like 7,500 from one box of RMC. You can do one mission and get 15,000 credits. So 5,000 AUEC isn't why you use a referral code. It's really about the referrer, right? Cause they get something. I'm at eight out of 10 referrals right now. I just need two more and they'll give me a free Gladius. That's pretty cool, right? I want a free Gladius. So yeah, I'm gonna show my referral code. I want a free Gladius, dude. What do you want from me? <laughs> if you have friends that uh, already play the game, use their referral codes and, and maybe they'll get something for free too. You know, it is what it is. So anyway, use a referral code, maybe get a starter pack if you're interested in playing and following the game in the long term. Because yeah, you could get the very expensive pack. You could always upgrade to it later, okay? If you get the starter pack now, you can upgrade the starter pack to a better ship later. You don't have to commit to that one ship. If you decide you don't like a ship anymore, you can always just melt it for in-store credit, and then you can use that credit to buy something else. And if you do buy a starter pack, just keep in mind that your game package is tied to it. So if you did melt it, you'd be melting your game package along with it. So maybe go the upgrade route instead. Just keep that in mind. Since the game is free, you don't really have much to lose other than your time. So I would just hop on and like put in the free fly code, right? So what's the steps to start playing the game? Go on the Robert Space Industries website and click on the free fly hero banner. It's gonna give you a page where you can sign up to Star Citizen and you can put in your free fly code, hit submit, and now all of a sudden, you're part of the free fly. You can download the game, you can install it, and you can play it. And you'll even have access to a couple ships that the game is gonna allow you to test out. You're gonna have access to a 100i, a Mustang, a couple other things too. And then that'll, that'll give you a good feel for what ships do in the game and how to play the game and how to fly and different functions that you can do in the game. So that's pretty cool. Like they give you a pretty decent amount of tools to play with. Uh, for the next couple days and then you can really see if you like the game or not So I would definitely check that out. You know, why not the star citizen community has been consistently growing every single year And I think that we're gonna see more momentum of growth in the coming years I think that it's gonna slowly get more and more polished more and more developed and it's gonna interest more and more people So I think star citizen is gonna continue to grow and we're at an awesome point right now where 3.18 added a lot of really core features to the game, like the salvage gameplay loop. It added 
persistence where items persist in the universe even though it does need some tweaking to be fair it is cool they've added the cargo refactor so now cargo boxes can be moved from ship to ship and there's the cargo grid and they can snap to the grid and you can use your tractor beam to move goods around that's pretty cool right for me personally i've become sort of obsessed with star citizen because it's such a cool idea it's such a cool sandbox i really want to support it I want to be a part of its development. I want to see it grow into the game that I truly want. The game is slowly going to start maturing into something that I really think is going to be so special. Star Citizen is unlike even today. Star Citizen is unlike anything I've ever played. And I think that in the future, it might be that we never see a game quite like Star Citizen in my lifetime. I'm serious. I could be full of shit there. I could be full of shit and I'd like to be full of shit, dude. Give me a better game than Star Citizen. I'll be happy, dude. I'm not trying to say I'd be unhappy. I, I'd love that. But it's just the likelihood of that happening with how unique Star Citizen is and its development and how much money's involved and how many players are involved. I just don't see anyone ever matching what Star Citizen is going to become and what it is today. I just don't see it. No Man's Sky does something different. It doesn't do the same stuff. Elite Dangerous does something different. It doesn't do the same stuff nothing really captures immersion like star citizen it it really doesn't and i think that it's worth it from that perspective just alone right it's special enough right now that i think you should absolutely give it a try you know what do you think what do you think about the game let me know in the comments below i'm really curious if you ever do get to play let me know how you felt about the game i'm really curious if i'm crazy or if like other people feel the same way as me about star citizen just let me know all right guys that's been it that's been fit dread thanks for watching and uh yeah catch you guys in the next one later